There's one other verse in Matthew chapter 6, verse 4, and it says this. Your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Now, the idea that God sees what is done in secret probably isn't sort of major news to us, because if he's God, then of course he sees everything. The trouble is it's not always something that is good news for us. I remember reading a story about a woman who was in a convent and on her wall was a, a picture of the all-seeing eye of God. Underneath was the caption, God is watching you. But it wasn't meant to be good news. I think we carry this idea that God follows us round, noticing every sin and failing and misdemeanour, recording it for future reference, and then one day he will throw the book at us. Well, this verse speaks about the God who sees but actually in a different way. He's the God that sees the good things, the unseen good things to which we aspire. He sees those cups of water that we share with others. You know, we may look at our actions and see how they simply don't seem to work, they don't produce much fruit, but God sees the heart behind what we're doing. Now, what's this got to do with healing? Well, I think we often approach God with the sense of why would God ever touch me? Well, maybe a better attitude is this. Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he want to? Now, it's not that we're saved or healed because of our good works. You know, once you've done enough good works, then God can release blessing upon us. But rather, there is nothing hidden from him. He sees deep within us. And he actually sees our needs far deeper than we do. There's a lovely story right at the end of John chapter 1 where Philip introduces Jesus to Nathaniel. Now Nathaniel is a bit sceptical and Jesus says something slightly strange to him. He says this, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. And was Jesus demonstrating that he he had a glimpse, a picture of where Nathaniel was a few minutes earlier or a few hours earlier, whenever it was, when Nathaniel was probably sitting on that fig tree, maybe thinking about the whole situation, thinking about maybe even who is the Messiah. And Jesus says, I saw you then. I knew what was going through your head. Now, he sees us. It's not just the idea that he sees the bad things that we do, but he also sees our dreams, our hopes, those pains deep within us, the longings that we bear. And when we come to him then, these are the things he sees, and these are the things he's longing to touch. Let's hold on to this truth. He is the God who sees. You can make it more personal. You, know, you are the God who sees me. I'd love to take a verse really and to kind of tune it in with my breathing. Maybe as I breathe in, I could say the words, you are the God, as I breathe out, who sees me. You are the God who sees me. Let me just try that. As you breathe in, have these words in your hearts, you are the God, he breathe out, who sees me. Let's do that for a couple of minutes. Just let that truth and the wonder of it sink in. You are the God who sees me. Father, Abba, Father. In your love for this world, you see everything. You see those hidden torments people are going through. You see the fears that people are facing. You see all the confusion that we read about in the, in the papers.
but Father, you also see us. When your eyes are fixed on us, Father, you see those things we try and do to bless others. We may not see much fruit to it, but you see it. You see our dreams and our hopes. You see our longings and our needs. And Father, you see with the incredible eyes of love, you love us. Lord Jesus, you you fill the whole universe. You fill the rooms where we are. You are here. You see everything about us. We are before you open and vulnerable. Let me simply say, here we are, Jesus, here we are. I wonder if you have a sense of where Jesus is for you right now. You might have a sense of him in front of you, beside you, around you. Just catch that. What is it you want to bring to him? Of course he sees everything. But he loves it when we're intimate enough to share our hearts with him. I wonder what you sense he's whispering to you. A whisper might come like a, a thought that drops in your mind, a Bible verse, a picture. Holy Spirit, we are dwelling places of your presence. You are here. Thank you for your abiding presence with us. Now overflow within us, we pray.
fill it afresh with the touch of Jesus that you bring to us. You know our longings, you know our hearts. Holy Spirit, come.